Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Stand in for murder, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, changes my stock and trade. If life is throwing you a sneak punch and you don't know how to dodge, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Valentine, I bet you never heard this one before. I've got to commit a crime to keep from being a criminal. No use kidding anybody. What I've got to do involves murder, and I'm the fall guy, the clay pigeon. All the way here on the train, I try to figure out of the frame. But there's no way unless I can get some help. You can't get in touch with me, so I'll be dropping in on you. The name's Bill Moran. It doesn't matter what I did in the past, Valentine. Well, it's fairly important to me, Moran, if I'm going to take this case. Okay, okay. I can tell you this much. I happen to be innocent, but the evidence stacks up against me. That's an old and familiar refrain, isn't it? Yeah, but it happens to be true, lady. They just have to see the police on me, and I'll be eating my meals off a tin plate. Ah, uh, who are they, in quotes? Oh, some boys back east. You could call them uh, gamblers, except they never bet on anything but a sure thing. Uh, I see. In other words, they're blackmailing you into this job you've got it to. Yeah, it's the only way they'll let me get out of the rack and make them forget what they have on me. Okay, suppose I take this thing. Uh, just suppose, that is. What is it you've got to do? That's just it. I don't know, Valentine. But you said something in your letter about murder. And I'm not even guessing, lady. They wouldn't be sending me all the way across the country for anything else. Well, you must have gotten some instructions. Sure, sure I did. Show up in suite 817 at the Hawthorne tonight. The door will be open. And I'm supposed to go inside and sit down until somebody shows up. That's all I know. Huh. Sounds like a new parlor game. I'm one of those conservative uh, gamblers who saves some of his money. So whatever it's worth for you to take my place, just name it. You can do it because nobody in this town knows me. Oh, he can do it all right, Mr. Moran. But don't you think that anyone who's stand in for a dead duck should have his head examined? <laughs> I didn't say this was going to be a picnic, lady. Well, Valentine... Well, that's a nice scenario you got there, Moran. You want to get out of the racket, settle down, go straight. You haven't bought a chicken farm, too, have you? Okay, forget it, Valentine. I didn't expect you to believe me. I didn't say I didn't believe you. It's just hard to believe. Oh, well, here. Perhaps you can believe this picture. Yeah. She's very attractive. And she doesn't look like she's out of the chorus at the Copacabana. She works in a real estate office, 35 bucks a week. And she lives with her mother in Brooklyn. And to make it real corny, her name is Mary. <laughs> well, maybe I'm a sucker, fella, but I think you sold me. Well, you may be buying more than you can handle this time, darling. Why don't you think it over? I have, Brooksy. If Moran is telling the truth, he deserves a break from somebody. Thanks, Valentine. Let me have your wallet and any other means of identification. Okay. Where are you located in town? Well, I was supposed to get in this morning, but I made it a day earlier, so I'd be sure I'd have nobody on my tail. I'm holed up in a cheap rooming house on Montgomery Street. Okay, now here's what you do. Here's a key to my place. Write down the address, Angel. Okay. Don't even go back to that rooming house, Moran. Yeah, but all you my things You can use my over... things. Anyway, you're not going anywhere. Just sit there and play solitaire till you hear from me. Here you are, Mr. Moran. Sam at the switchboard will see that no one disturbs you. He'll also know if you go out. Don't worry, I'll stay put. All right, get going, Moran. You'll hear from me sometime tonight. I hope. Take care of yourself, Valentine. Oh, this is fine. What am I supposed to do? Knit one, pearl two, and worry myself sick until this is over? George, Why, this is... Why, Brooksy, I have a very important job for you. You've got to follow somebody. What? Yeah, me. Oh. For one thing, I want you to be outside the Hawthorne tonight when I go up to meet somebody I don't know and who fortunately doesn't know me. Anything you say, Mr. Moran, you crazy lunk. <laughs> Time bomb going on. Uh huh. So it begins. Hey, hey, what's wrong? Let me help you. The knife. I'll get that thing out of you and call a doctor. Hold on. I'll do. Too, too late. Mr. Clayton, I found the escrow papers in the file, and according to. Hey, will you stop screaming? It's not going to wake him up. He's dead. Don't come near me. You've got no reason to kill me, too. What are you talking about? Look, 
If you leave me alone, I'll just tell the police I found him that way. Tell them I didn't see who did it. What do you mean you... Oh, I guess this does look bad. Knife and hand, body on the floor. Who are you anyway, sister? Come on, talk. Mr. Clayton's secretary. We were working late. He wanted to get off on a vacation in a few days and... Oh. Now what? Why the delay take? You must be Moran. Oh, I get it. This frame is beginning to look so perfect you could put a picture in it. You wrote him all those threatening letters. And I suppose they're all nicely tucked away for the cops to find. Stay away from me. Help, somebody. Go ahead, baby. Blow your top. Sorry I can't stick around for the double cross. The man I'm supposed to have killed, Brooksy, is Charles Clayton, vice president of the Colonial Savings Bank. Oh, do you still want to go on with this little masquerade? I'm going to call Lieutenant Riley. Fine. But you stay right here and keep your eye on the entrance of that hotel. Well, what'll I do? Count the times the revolving door goes round? No, you're going to wait till the cops get through with that secretary, then stick with her. See where she goes, everything she does. Well, unless she's wearing a typewriter cover for a hat, how will I know her? You can't miss her, Angel. She's got red, coppery hair down to her shoulders, the Hollywood version of the perfect secretary. In other words, you wouldn't be expecting her to take short hair. Okay, I'll keep in touch with you through the switchboard at your place. Good girl, and there's my cue to get going. Valentine, it costs the taxpayers a lot of money to train police officers. Look, Lieutenant... If you're going to take law enforcement all in your own little hands, they'll just have to sit around and get rusty. Now, you wouldn't want to see that happen, would you? Oh, it wasn't a question of enforcing the law, Lieutenant. I was just trying to protect my client. Well, we might have been able to help you in our awkward, unprofessional way. Why didn't you come to us first when this Moran guy waltzed in on you? Because nothing happened first. Yeah. The only thing to do with you is to give you a desk space here at headquarters. At least that way we could keep an eye on you. Now, look, you. Yes, Lieutenant. We made a quick check, see? The guy you saw up at the hearth on was Clayton's secretary, all right. And the guy was trying to get things cleaned up so he could get off on a vacation. Those are facts and nothing's wrong with them. Yeah, well, here's another fact. I was kissed off and left to freeze against the cushion. Why? This isn't penny ante stuff, Lieutenant. You're only guessing when you suspect the secretary and you know it. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. This thing is too pat. I walk in at the appointed time. There's a guy gasping on his last with a knife in him. Uh... And right then, Theo, baby, wanders in from the next room. Mm. So we have a batch of my fingerprints, a witness. And I understand some letters in the file supposedly written by Moran. <sighs> yeah. You know, if it was anybody else but you, I'd slam you in the can so fast it would take your breath away. Look, Lieutenant, let me have until tomorrow, just one day. Okay. Okay, but if you don't come up with something by then, I'm going to have to ask you to hand over that client of yours. It's a deal, but one more favor. What do you want now, my badge? The secretary, Theo Brown, will give you a description of Moran. And that description will be me. Huh? Let it stay that way. Uh, are you out of your head? You'll have every cop in town on your tail. Yeah, maybe, Lieutenant. But I'm betting there'll be more than one character tipping his mitt when he finds out that Bill Moran, wanted for murder, is still on the loose. George, I'm really beat around the edges this morning. Hey, yeah, uh, Angel. Have some of this coffee. Thanks. I was back watching Theo's bungalow at 7 a.m. No leads? Not unless you can read something into them. About 8.30, Theo drove over to the Colonial Bank. Well, sure. She works there. Oh, well, she must be taking the day off. She got as far as the entrance, and she suddenly stopped. Huh? Looks a little frantic to me. Yeah, well, what then? She made a beeline to the Samba restaurant on Doris Boulevard. Well, that place doesn't open till 6 o'clock. Well, Theo sashayed in as though she had a half interest in the place. Chick Hollis doesn't give away a half interest to anybody. Well, she certainly wasn't visiting the porters or the scrub women. Well, why not Chick Hollis himself? Hmm? Yeah, sure. He's just the kind of a boy who likes these big elaborate deals that would be hard to trace to him. Yeah. There may be a connection between Theo and Hollis. Aha. Uh-huh. Things are beginning to open up, Brooksy. And if Hollis is behind it... I think I know a way to find out what this is all about. Hello, Theo. Huh? What... What are you 
doing here? Close the door. Now, if you start screaming again, you're going to suddenly lose your voice. You didn't answer my question, Moran. What are you going to do? I'm asking the questions. Nice place you got around here. It wasn't half bad waiting around all day to see you. That gun on the coffee table doesn't scare me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just cleaning it. I'll put it away. Well, what do we do? Just sit here? No, I got other plans. I've been looking through your closets and other places. And I found out a lot of things. I hope my dainty washables met with your masculine approval. Never mind that. What I want to know is how could a secretary afford three fur coats like I saw in a closet full of expensive dresses? Maybe I saved my money. Or maybe there's a simpler explanation. I think I'll make myself a drink. I mean Chick Hollis. What? Never heard of the man. Look, Theo, suppose you stop lying. Go on, sit down in that chair. You don't care how you manhandle women, do you, Mr. Moran? Now pick up that telephone. Call up Chick. But be sure you dial the right numbers. I know what they are. What do you expect to get out of this, Moran? Just wait and see. You might be surprised. Now just say, Moran is here with me, Chick. What? If you say any more, I'll put a period on the sentence with his gun. All right. Hello? Moran is here with me, Chick. That's all, Theo. Now you can make yourself a short drink. I don't think we'll have to wait very long. Why doesn't Hollis use his key, Theo? Or is he playing it safe? I, Stay where I... you are. Theo, what do you mean by calling You're me? You're in the right place, friend. All right, you got muscles. Well, so a, what? There's a third act, sister. A guy like Hollis wouldn't come here alone. Well, little man, don't you want to come in too? What did you do to the boss? Why, I... You're not going to do anything. I'll take that gun. All right, now the three of you. Go on, sit on that couch. I think I'm about to make a speech. Now, wait a minute, Moran. Certainly we can... Uh come to an understanding about this. You heard me wrong, Hollis. I said I was going to do the talking. Chick, if you told me it might be like this, I could have done something about that monkey. Best thing you can do, Squeaky, is keep your mouth shut. Right now, he's got all the cards. Yeah, and I'm going to improve my hand as I go along. Hollis, you're a grade-A sucker. You don't think anybody's smarter than you, and that's bad. All Theo said on the phone was that Moran is here, and the next minute you were leaning on the front door buzzer. Well, Chick... Have you got any answers? Let's wait till he's through, huh? If you never showed, Chick, I'd be left high and dry because I was only guessing. But now I know. You know what? I know this much, Squeaky. The big frame was on, and I was in the middle of it. If one of you doesn't tell me how I can get out of it, I'm going to kill the three of you. Chick. You see, Theo, I got nothing to lose. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word about power. Have you ever driven up San Francisco's famous hill streets like Powell, Taylor, and Jones? Some hill. But try any hill with Chevron Supreme gasoline in your car and you'll say, some gas. For this premium quality gasoline specially blended to give your car its fullest, smoothest power on the steepest hills. Chevron Supreme means faster starts, too. And extra pep for quicker pickups in heavy traffic driving. Best of all, this premium quality gasoline is climate-tailored to give your car peak performance in each different altitude and temperature zone in the West. Why not try a tank full first thing tomorrow? Get Chevron Supreme at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. It's bad enough to play stand-in for a fall guy. It's really bad when the frame-up involves murder. Worse yet, if you're as stubborn as George Valentine, you carry on the masquerade even when you know that your client, Bill Moran, is being sought for murder. All of which leaves you, gun in hand, facing three desperate characters who'd like nothing better than to see you good and dead. Oh, what's the matter with you three? Didn't you ever go to school? Can't you talk? I, uh, I think we can come to terms, Moran. 
I'm afraid you were framed and deserve some consideration. Oh, now, Mr. Hollis, you're so good to me. You can make any arrangements you want, Chick, but get this straight. None of this is coming out of my share. I worked too hard setting things up for the kill. <laughs> I like your choice of words, Theo. If you just had to told me, Chick, I'd have come here prepared for this guy. I know you feel naked without your arsenal, boy, soprano, but sit down. Do you hear what he called me? Someday I'm going to get him and nobody will even recognize him when I'm through. Sit down, Squeaky. You too, Theo. Look, I'm a businessman, Moran. I settle when I have to. Especially when a gun is pointed at you. Go on, keep talking. Well, here's my proposition. I'll see that you get out of the country. A private plane and a pilot who knows where to set you down in Mexico. Uh-uh, not good enough. What am I going to do? Eat friolis for the rest of my life? Five grand? Oh, I want to be able to afford a lottery ticket once in a while. Ten grand. Let's not quibble about pennies and make it twenty grand. But if I do win a lottery, I'll send you half of what I make. It's very funny. Now, come on, I'll stow you away for the night so nobody can find you. You can get started in the morning. Oh, I got a place to stay. Right here. Chick, you're not going to leave me here. Not with Moran. I always do what I have to. You know that, Theo. Don't worry, sister, you're safe. The worst that can happen is my snoring. If you close the door of your bedroom and stay there, it's all going to be peace and quiet. Isn't he a regular little gentleman? Oh, Hollis, be sure to take that vest pocket gunsel with you. Squeaky likes to take care of me. And I like to take care of myself. Nobody's going to look for me in the apartment of the late Mr. Clayton's secretary. All right, Moran, you're calling the shots. Oh, uh, Theo. Yes? I think you better let me have the key. Maybe safer for everyone. If you're worrying about me, don't. Just the same, you'd better give it to me. I said I'm going to keep it, Chick. Good night. Didn't you hear what I... All right, good night. Come on, Squeaky. That guy thinks he's through with me. Even if I do find you loathsome, Moran, do you mind if I sit down next to you and have a brandy? I don't care what you do. Hey, what are you doing with my pocketbook? Give it to me. <laughs> I always wondered why women didn't carry knapsacks instead of pocketbooks. What, no ham sandwiches? Let me have that. Okay, okay. Here. Where are you going? Just want to see something. Yeah. Our friend Squeaky is holding up a lamppost down there. You think he might be waiting for you? Does it make you feel better, Moran? I haven't felt good since I met you yesterday. Now, up you go. What are you going to do with me? You're going into that closet, sister. You won't freeze with all those fur coats in no. there. No, no. Hello? It's me, Brooksy. Safe? <laughs> like a babe nuzzling in his mother's arms. Now listen carefully. I'm at Theo's place and I could use some help. So get over here as soon as you can. Yes, Lieutenant, I know I only have till 12 o'clock. But if you'll just do this, maybe I'll have the answer by then. Hey, you. Yeah, you, trying to hold up that lamppost. Oh, me? Yeah, get in the car. But I didn't do anything, officer. It don't matter, bub. I'm arresting you for loitering. Well, Bill, here she is, Miss Theo Brown. You have no idea what trouble it was getting her here. Oh, I smoked ten packs of cigarettes today, Miss Brooks. Where's Valentine? Oh, well, that shouldn't be as important to you as Theo. She's the one who put the finger on you, Mr. Moran. Moran? But who is Did the... you do that to me, lady? Now, Bill, why? just sit down. I'm going to find out why, even if, if I have to If you do, give... Bill, you're going to have to walk over me to get to her. What? That's what I said. If you want everything to come out even for everybody, including Mary back in Brooklyn, you'll listen to me. Oh, all right. You and I are just going to see that Theo stays right here in George's apartment. That shouldn't be long. George may show up any time between now and the next century. Come on in, Hollis. Come on in. This is your office. 
Make yourself at home. What are you doing here, Moran? Any reason I shouldn't be here? Unless you told Squeaky I shouldn't be. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, let's skip that. Don't tell me this is merely a social call. Anything huh? but. I came to tell you you'll have to take more money out of the bank. Look, Moran, what do you think I'm made of? You got no choice but dig it up. If you want to see Theo again. Where is she? Where she can scream as loud as she wants and it won't make any difference. How much more do you want? I want to be sure about that trip to Mexico without any fancy byplay. And I could use 10,000 more. In fact, I'm going to have it. How would you like to have 20,000 more? I don't quite get the lyrics, but the tune sounds okay. Get rid of Theo. Get rid of her for good. Oh. Now I recognize the tone. It's the funeral march. It's important to me. And you may as well be hiding out for two murders as for one. <laughs> oh, it's nice doing business with you, Hollis. As long as I never have to turn my back on you. All you have to do is kill her. And bring me the key ring you'll find in her pocketbook. Okay. But we'll play it my way. Which is? You go and get the money. You'll find me waiting here for you. How do I know? I can't afford to double-cross you. All right, Moran. Just stay right where you are. Oh, now there's a man with his heart in the right place. Hello, Riley. This is Valentine. The trap's all baited and the rat is on his way. Yeah, I'll be down there as soon as I can, Lieutenant. After that, I think we'll have all the answers. So long. Ooh, if Riley ever decided to throttle me, I think the jury would call it justifiable homicide. You'll reach for your gun and I'll kill you. Huh? Well, when did you get out, Squeaky? I got friends. I can get fail. You had me picked up, didn't you? Valentine. You... Who's Valentine? I've been in the next room listening. You just called the cops. I'm going to do chicken me a favor and kill you. <laughs> You're an all-around boy, aren't you, Squeaky? Using a gun now. I never killed that banker, but you gave me an idea. I think I will use a knife on you. I always knew I was lucky. It'll be nice and quiet. You're through wisecrack and Valentine. Hey, now, wait a minute. Put that gun away. You couldn't cut a piece of cheese, you boy soprano. Don't, don't you call me that boy soprano. I'll show you. You ought to know by now when you lose your temper, you only see red. I just saw Hollis leave the building. Oh, yeah, the gentleman on the floor, Brooks, he didn't like being called a boy soprano. What are you doing here anyway? What a man. First he tells me to follow him, and when I finally catch up with him, he asks questions. Oh, oh I guess you ought to be in on the payoff, Angel. But we'll have to wait. The bank doesn't open till 10. Where do you intend to spend all that nice, crisp money, Hollis? Huh? What's that? Lieutenant Riley, homicide. No, 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 no. Leave that safe deposit box out so we can take a good look at it. Oh, uh, sure. What's all this about, Lieutenant? I'm a respectable businessman. I run a restaurant yeah, tonight. Yeah, you also know how to kill and have someone else pay oh. for it. All right. Don't disillusion him too quickly, George. He may die of shock. The name is Valentine. All right, your name's Valentine. What's the gag? Moran's my client, and he didn't want to be framed. And you really dreamt up a beauty. What have you been doing? Taking goop pills? Mr. Hollis doesn't seem to take you seriously, George. You better convince him. The first mistake you made, Hollis, is when you made such a commotion about a key when you were at Theo's place. Now, that made me curious. Strange how your curiosity doesn't interest me. I got a good look at Theo's key ring. There was a key to a safe deposit box on it. That's what you were haggling about. Can I call my lawyer, Lieutenant? The Lieutenant seems to be occupied, Mr. Hollis. I traced the key down here to the Colonial Savings Bank. The box is in your name and Theo's. What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing, ordinarily. But on the first of the month, when the bank examiners come around, they might just find that Vice President Clayton has been stashing away all sorts of money for his vacation with Theo. Suddenly, I can't hear a word you're saying. That was nice long-range planning, getting Theo into the bank so she could make Clayton forget what they taught him in Sunday school. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! 150000 bucks in here. Well, that's a nice round sum. Enough for you to split with Theo. Even after you paid to import a guy to take the rap for killing Clayton. Now tell me, Hollis, did you wait until you heard me coming down the hall to put the knife in him? And did Theo let you out the back way? I didn't kill Clayton. 
Well, Squeaky says he didn't, so you two boys will have a chance to fight it out for the yard. And with Squeaky and Theo both singing, you're going to be a dead duck, Hollis. Uh, you know, George, a horrible thought just occurred to me. What's that, Roxine? Well, either Hollis or Theo could have come here yesterday morning, taken the money and gone somewhere to live happily ever after. Uh-uh. That couldn't happen. Huh? huh? What made you so sure? How come you knew you had a whole day to work in? Because Hollis and Theo overlooked something. I never overlooked anything. <laughs> when you go to the trouble to kill the vice president of a bank, you run the risk of its closing the next day in respect to his beloved memory. Look, why are we going to the household fixtures department, Angel? You'll see. George, I just thought of something. Mm. The reason Theo was so upset. Mm. I mean, when she stopped at the front door of the bank and then made a beeline for the samba. I wasn't close enough to see the sign, bank closed. <laughs> Came the door. Mm. Yeah, but what are we supposed to do among all these pots and pans? Buy a wedding present for Bill Moran and Mary back in Brooklyn. Oh, miss, how much are these chimes? Twelve fifty, and a very good buy. Listen. Oh, nice. I'll take two of them. Well, I hate to ask this, but... Angel, who's the other one for? If I live long enough, you'll find out. Can you imagine driving around the world not once, but four times without an engine repair? Well, in actual mileage, one man has driven even farther than that on compounded RPM motor oil and without an engine repair. His name is George M. Hollingsworth, an insurance agent in Bakersfield, California. Here's what Mr. Hollingsworth said, quote, One of my cars has gone 123,000 miles on RPM without engine repairs, unquote. And lots of Western motorists have told us they've driven seven and eight years on RPM without engine repairs. Thousands of others have learned that RPM pays its own way many times over. For RPM is compounded to stop carbon trouble, to guard engine hot spots left bare and exposed to wear by ordinary motor oils, and to keep the whole engine system cleaner. Try RPM motor oil tomorrow. Get it at any standard station or any independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean, we'll take better care of your car. Next week, when you tune our way for another adventure of George Valentine, you'll find George faced with a new problem in a letter that reads... Dear Mr. Valentine, how do you explain this in a man? At 38, he's retired, a millionaire. Yet he steals a trinket from a five and ten cent store. Make sure he's caught and then merely laughs. This man is my husband. I must find out what's happening to him. Please come to my home as soon as possible. Signed, Edna Pallister. Next week, a new case for George. The Malignant Heart. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Gene Bates as Theo, Gerald Moore as Hollis, Robert Jellison as Squeaky, and Eddie Marr as Moran. The music is composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.